Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Only Stupid Answers. This is the show where we talk about movies, TV shows, and comic books. With me, as always, is Roxy Stryer. Hi, Roxy. Hi, DJ. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> well, today is our 300th episode. God damn it, 300 episodes of uh, of Only Stupid Answers. Um, and so uh, we were trying to figure out what to do to to celebrate and because it's a very special milestone and we like to celebrate our milestones. So today we're going to have a bunch of guests on the show. And you know what? I'm just going to let the guests introduce themselves. Hey guys, I'm Steve Zaragoza. I have a podcast called Dynamic Banter and I have known DJ for a very long time. What's up everybody? I'm Hector and I'm the coolest. Hello Blazing Girls, I'm Krusty the Clown. No, that's just really terrifying. It's me, your resident supervillain, Mr. J. Washington. Hi, I'm Sal from the YouTube channel Comic Pop and from Spider-Versity. Hi everybody, my name is Augustine. I am uh, one of the three of Heroes Reforged. What's up? It's Maud Garrett here. Hello, I am Ash. To Victoria Robinson. And I am Jason, the podcaster Inman. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It is I, Sam the Hammer Humphreys. My name is Adam Lavick. I'm from a channel called Heroes Reforged, and uh, very excited to be here. Oh, my God. There's so many people. Oh, my goodness. And if you wanted to watch this episode live, which, let me tell you, it, w- it would have been a trip. If you watched this live with us, uh, you can do that over at patreon.com slash only stupid answers. You can watch it early without ads, live. You can be in the chat. We've got some amazing people in the chat today. Uh, Glenn Caesar, Kayla Marie, John Libra. Thank you all for uh joining us live of course if you go on itunes you can give us five star reviews please and thank you we need those to survive please do it and uh as we've mentioned before i'll read anything you write in there you can shit all over this show but if it's five star reviews i'll read it uh and uh every week we can ask you a question on spotify so check that out another thing before we leave the patreon um within the time of this episode dropping we will be finishing on spider versity our patreon exclusive show spider versity we'll be finishing our discussion of spider-man movies before we transition to something cool something new and cool uh and so we're ending uh spider-man no way home and because it is the end of our our movies discussion for the time being until morbius comes out on streaming um uh, we're gonna have special guests on for that so you're not gonna want to miss out on that but enough of all that business up top. Let's get into our 300th episode celebration. We're answering your all's questions. Uh, Roxy and I and all our guests are answering your questions um, and uh, for editing purposes. So this is a self-contained episode of a podcast. I'm going to have to edit down those answers. If you want to hear all of our guests' answers, you can do that over at patreon.com slash only stupid answers. You knew it was coming. You could guess at home. First question from Boiler Huff. What have been some of your favorite OSA episodes or discussions? Uh, Roxy, I'm sure you've gotten on all the myriad shows you've done. I'm sure you've gotten questions like this before. And I don't know if you're like me where it's like, ooh, uh, I forget them. Yeah, the second whoa, whoa. we're done. <laughs> the second you said it, I was like, oh, I was just talking to somebody this week about something. But I don't, I don't know. Like, I loved... I loved obviously when we would record together. <laughs> that was really nice. Um, in both iterations with Sam and at your awesome uh, new studio now. I love when we moved to that studio uh, with the Noggin people. Yeah, that was great. That was great yeah. too. Um, and I loved that it was next to a coffee place that I would make you guys walk to with me and every time I would try new pastries and, and make you guys try them with me. So I didn't eat the whole pastry. That's this is not as entertaining for you guys, but these were the, these are the memories. These are, these are the memory. Well, yeah, these are the things you remember. That place was so centrally located. It was so nice. I don't know about centrally located. Well, I mean, we were able to get, there's Subway, there's Chipotle. Yeah. Sam yeah. And I yeah. Would go grab lunch. You had the yeah, coffee it was place. Really great. Yeah, and those and those kids were cool. I liked those kids; they yeah. were great, um, and that was fun. Well, fun and fact: we've got them on the show. We're bringing them out right now. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome. Yeah. Um, I, for some reason, I feel like the big reveal of today should have been that we put the vowels back in stupid. Oh it's shit! Not. No, it's not. I couldn't. I can't do it. I can't do it. There's just and not enough characters. Three hundred. <laughs> the uh, vowels are back! Yay! Yeah, yeah, and then like. 
friendship moments too. Like I remember I was going through a, a gnarly breakup and I would come to the studio and I'd be like just sitting on the couch. And I was like so bummed and you guys were awesome about it. And we're like, why are you so upset? You're a lot better. This is okay. Yeah. Like move on. Um, and you guys were so supportive. So uh, I don't know. It's so silly. Like obviously there's a bajillion on air moments too with like the soundboard and beep boop beep boops mm -hmm. and talking about all of those shows and all of us collectively being in that bind where we had to watch 17 DC shows a week on CW. Uh, all the moments. I know that that did not answer the question as definitively as you guys wanted, but that's what I got. It 100% answered the question. I also want to point out anytime back going back to the, the studio days, uh, anytime we made you play a video game. Oh my God. Very fun. Oh memories I remember there's this one time, I think Mod came on and there was some pirate ship games. Yes. And I, but I don't, I think that one, I don't think any of us understood that one. I think we were I, all. I was like, what do you guys do? How is this? The best one was, um, was the, the game where you had to like defuse, defuse bombs and stuff or like, yeah. so that one was I like, okay, well, that. we're all kind of on the same page with this one. You know what one I also liked was the making a burger. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, good that times. Cool. Well, speaking of um, uh, being in studio together, I have a clip. Oh my goodness, of our very first Super TV showdown. I this morning I I brought out the old OSA archive ar ar uh, archive drive, archive <laughs> or arcade drive. No, <sighs> I blew the dust off. Uh, I plugged it in, and I found I found some old stuff. So here is a clip from our very first Super <laughs> TV showdown. Oh. Welcome, everybody. Can I get a welcome? welcome? Welcome. Thank you so much. Guys, welcome to Super TV Showdown. We should That's get sound. One. We should get like a little, like a little like a drop. Pad. No, we should get like a thing. Like you know? talk radio in the morning? Like, like, a, well. like a, not like a drop, but like a, like a little soundboard so we have like little sound bites. Like, I don't I'll know. be it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, would, uh, we need a zing. Ling. There we go. <laughs> I think this is just. Uh, I already am backing out of the idea, but I'm going to say it anyways because it came to my head. It'd be fun if all the legends had the ability to merge with them. So to make Firestorm, you need another person. It's always a different person narrating or a different person gets to be Firestorm. Like it switches between Jax and somebody They should else. all have to fuse together into Fire... And now it's just Firestorm show. Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah, all become great. Firestorm together. It's like Captain Planet. I think that's the worst. Thank you. But You're welcome. I had to say it because it came to my mind. Yeah. I had to get I had to get it out because it would have been like a poison to yeah. me. <laughs> so speaking of people's favorite OSA moments, a uh, uh, beloved episode... Uh, <laughs> for for how it damaged Sam and I was uh, Cage96 uh, says Transformers is a classic for sure Davey Backwards Dab co-signed it by saying I still love that episode this was the episode where Sam and I talked about uh, Transformers uh, the last night and, and and I've got a clip of that too and what's funny about this I didn't know when I pulled it up that was literally the very first thing Sam and I did a video, video recording of uh, huh. so I literally had to go back into the, I didn't even have a video file on the drive I had to go back and like uncover it uh, so here, here's a clip of that in a very bare bones uh, DJ shitty apartment studio nobody's saying the Fast and Furious films are like reinventing cinema but they're one thing they're fun this movie was not fun. No, it wasn't. It, how is Even, this not fun? It's Transformers. Transformers. Do you ever have those moments in life where you're like, you find something so pointless, you want to throw a tantrum? <laughs> you know, you want to like kick your legs and like start like screaming, and like shaking your body. If you guys know that feeling, that's what I was controlling myself to not do during yeah. that time. I was like, oh my God, this is the stupidest <laughs> shit in the entire world. Like this is, this is a world where there's Transformers and there's four women <laughs> in this stupid house worried about Hey, is this? Wait a minute. There's a scene where like they're like, "Hey, you're not." I'm sorry. Let me paraphrase really quick. Hey, daughter, have you fucked anyone recently? Because that makes you important if you're having sex, yeah. right? And a healthy adult. And she's like, "No, mom, I'm doing King Arthur shit." <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> it's like three having three hyperactive thirteen year olds, uh, all ch talking at the. A loud as they can be at the same time. At the, it's literally at the same time. They're all talking over each other. If you sped that up time and a half, so they're doing it extra fast. One of them is slamming their action figures together. One of them has one of those noise making toys. Yeah. There's a whatever. So well, he's making all the noise. Like a Game can. Boy at top volume. Yeah, top volume. He's making all those noises while the other one flashes a laser pointer into your eyes for two and a half hours. <laughs> That is, I <laughs> fell asleep in this movie, and I didn't miss a God beat. God bless you. God bless you that I you had could to. do that. I had to. <laughs> so, Roxy, uh, similarly, in a similar vein, um, 
is there a movie like Transformers: The Last Night destroyed Sam and I? Is there a movie that just melted your brain that you just couldn't process that you like uh, hated on a level that like is hard to describe? Ever in my life? Ever in your life? I think the one that it, it's not fair to say that this did that, but the one that I just seem to fight tooth and nail about is Phantom Thread, because I just. And I bet I, if I rewatched it, I bet I wouldn't even dislike it that much. Mm-hmm. But I just, the ending bothered me and I love PTA. Yeah. But sometimes, man, when you are just like, I'm going to be pretentious, I'm like, screw you. Yeah. I don't yeah. want you to be pretentious. That's a good choice. I still have not seen Phantom Thread, possibly because of uh, one, I think for the runtime, I feel like it's a long movie. I, maybe it's not. Uh, but also because of, of sentiments like yours just now you just continuing to say that for five years now <laughs> yeah and it's like eventually because and also like I, I i like pta when i like pta you know what i mean like i like boogie nights i like heart eight uh uh i like most of magnolia um but like there will be blood i'm not re-watching I like you know what i mean i like it i'm not gonna revisit it you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, there was a, a the second Fantastic Beast movie I also hated, and then um, hated in a way that uh, I realized because we talked about it last week. Hated in a way that I blocked out a majority of the a lot movie. Of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was a movie that came out this. Oh, what is it called? Um, it's the musical theater show that I love. That oh fuck and, you, um, uh, uh, date uh uh. I can't Evan, think Evan, no. uh, dear Evan Hansen. Yep. Oh gosh, that one was so hard to get through. DJ. I mean, because Phantom Thread's not an actual bad movie. It's well done. Yeah. It just bothers me. Dear Evan Hansen was like, no, yeah. oh, get off the stage. So, uh, 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 Roxy, you mentioned the soundboard earlier. I feel like the soundboard's a good. Do we have something on the soundboard that yeah, can yeah. help me transition to guests? For sure. I've been prepping it just for this show. So hold on. Let me load up. Is there a movie that upset me so much that I couldn't even? Is that what you're asking me? <laughs> it was a fantastic fest movie. And, uh, you know, as they can <laughs> incite feelings of my br- I can't even uh, of, of can't evening. But um, it was some movie. Shit. What was it called? Maybe the devil something. But it was like this these this brother and sister caught in like a like a grifters like weird cave that he built like these series of tunnels that he built somewhere and he like get these kids get caught in it and then there's like weird stuff with like menstrual blood and like <laughs> do you remember this movie dj i think i remember you talking about it i think i remember you yeah. talking about it that movie was like wow that broke my brain and not very many movies break my brain truthfully I, I hate having to keep going back to this well, but um, Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice, kind of broke my brain a little bit, and and in how I couldn't connect to it, and then also seeing the response online, the really passionate fan base, I was like, oh, I kind of felt like Superman in Kingdom Come. Oh, they don't need me anymore. Oh, I'm outdated. I should retire to a to a holographic farm on the Fortress of Solitude because the public wants me to kill the Joker, and that's what they want. So I'm no longer valuable or needed. And I was kind of like, like Principal Skinner, I was like admitting to myself, I'm like, no, I'm out of touch, I guess. It's not the children who are out of touch. I'm out of touch. Oh, is there a movie that broke my brain like Transformers the last night? Ooh, Fan Four Stick. Uh, for those who don't know, that's the Josh Trank version of Fantastic Four, where we all were wondering why was this allowed to happen? Even though those of us in the industry understood that Fox needed to do a movie so they could keep the rights, they should have just let go and let God. There are many movies like that in my life, but I think one that stands out recently for me is the Stephen King movie Sleepwalkers, which is a film about an incestuous mother, son, monster team, who are, can only be hurt by cats. It's awesome. I've seen it at least three times. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything as bad as Transformers. Uh, but so are we talking about like a movie that was 
maybe meant to be like bad because I'm thinking a movie like Kung Pao Into the Fist, right? So that movie was bad, but it's good. Like it's really good. Um, that movie was so bad and that movie kind of like helped uh, form my sense of humor as a kid because I didn't realize that you could make a bad, really funny movie and then have it like know that you're making a bad, funny movie, which didn't click until I saw a movie like that. So I guess you could kind of say that rearranged my brain. Ooh, I feel like I know Jason's answer more than I know my answer. Well, I don't know the answer to a movie to demolish my brains. So what is my answer? <laughs> your answer is either, and I can never remember what this movie is actually called. So please continue to scream at your iPhones. Um, it's either Bloodshot or Blood Sport, whichever Valiant movie Vin Diesel. Oh, uh, bloodshot. 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 It's Bloodshot. Yes. And plus uh, Snake Eyes, because those are the two movies oh, I've heard boy. you yell at the most uh, in the last look, I was, couple years. I was in on Snake Eyes until Magic showed up. Yes. I wanted I wanted a ninja movie. I, I had the same problem with Shang-Chi. Don't give me a Kung Fu movie. And then suddenly a magical snake shows up. You're going <laughs> to knock me out of the movie. You're going to melt my brain. And I'm not going to understand why anybody is fighting with katanas when you have magical superpowers in this world. Uh, Ashley, what would be your answer? Uh, it's hard. It's it's hard to say. Um, again, yours really stuck out to me. Uh, I love, uh, really, I love really the, the memory of me yelling that yeah. snake eyes stands out to, to Here, you. Here's, here's the last movie I walked out of. Um, I don't know if it melted my brain, but the last movie I walked out of was Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Oh, so yeah. I, I guess that's probably the one. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, so my one of my favorite movies, it's not a good movie, but one of my favorite movies, because it always befuddles me, is Zardoz, which is this 1970s uh sci-fi fantasy movie starring Sean Connery in a bright orange Speedo. You've definitely seen the memes. You've seen the photos out there. If you've ever seen a bearded ponytail Sean Connery with a gun and he's wearing an orange Speedo, you know exactly the movie I'm talking about. And that movie is Zardoz. Uh, if there's any movie that I saw that melted my brain when I saw it, <laughs> it was Rob Zombie's remake of Halloween. I didn't know that you can make such a horrible remake. <laughs> But it's literally 50% origin story, 50%. I'm just going to rip off what John Carpenter did, but not do it as well. All right. So let's move on to our next question, uh, which is from Leonard Kim. Uh, in the span of 300 episodes filmed, God, fucking 300 episodes. That's so many episodes. Uh, Crazy. What is a TV show or movie that you think does not get enough appreciation or deserves more love? Roxy, I know. Oh, it's Gotham. It's Gotham. <laughs> it's Gotham. Come on. What are we talking about? Okay. Where, what happened with the people? What, it, it just, it's Gotham. Gotham deserves more love from this fan base specifically because the amount of even like characters that Gotham is the first or is a live action version that actually slaps. Like what they did with Riddler and Penguin, both really fucking cool. Um, also Mad Hatter, like there's a lot of, you want to talk about um, uh, Professor Pig, fine. Mm -hmm. Hello Gotham, hello Gotham. I mean, it might not have been the show you guys all wanted because yes, they made a Batman show with Bruce Wayne by, before Batman existed. Mm -hmm. Fine, you're right. But then once you're <laughs> over that, that show f was freaking great. Uh, so, uh, um, yeah, I mean, you bring that up. Like, in the Batman, Riddler and Penguin don't make out once. No. Not one never. time. <laughs> and that's messed up. That's rude. You know? Missed opportunity. Missed Come opportunity. On. I uh, mean, there's other better shows, but when, you, but when we're talking about this audience, I can't believe how hated that show was. Um, oh man. So deserves show that deserves more love. It's crazy that I've asked, uh, like 10 people this question all this week. And now that it's time for me to answer the question, I cannot think of one. There's obviously a lot of stuff. Um, you know, I think about like a, a bunch of like, like some of the, the more low key stuff that I just don't think are on people's radar. Like I wish we as a culture talked about like Mandy more. Like not not Mandy Moore, the performer, the movie Mandy. I wish we talked about that more. Wait, no, DJ, your answer is obviously that one show that even I still haven't watched. The Expanse. Tell me 
Yes. Yeah. Oh, great point. The Expanse. The Expanse. The Expanse. Thank you, Roxy. The Expanse is uh, hands down one of the best sci-fi series in the last decade, if not um, farther back than that. Uh, if you liked game, if you liked the way Game of Thrones tackled fantasy for, for the most part, you will like the way the show tackles sci-fi. And I also and and because it doesn't, um, it, it it is structured different in Game of Thrones, where like Game of Thrones kept spreading people out and like and delaying like wait for the big battle the big battle with the white walkers you gotta wait the show's not structured that way so there's no like every season is relatively more self-contained which uh as somebody and and roxy i i don't know how you feel about this but as somebody that's been watching tv critically for a while i I think that's the way to do it like sorry lost sorry game of thrones i think pay off stuff as you go so there's not so much pressure on your finales (laughs) yeah completely and also so that I don't have to remember like four years ago what took place in order to understand what's happening now. Yeah. A show that DJ, I think both you and I would pick because I don't hear anybody going back and rewatching or talking about this. And I think you and I both think this is one of the best shows of the decade would would be the Americans. Agreed. I mean, that show had the best finale, best Mm -hmm. series finale of, I would say it's a top best, uh, top five best series finale ever. Yeah. And, I agree. I specifically who talks about it anymore. Nobody um, specifically with Americans. The one sequence that I that lives in my brain rent free is um, when um, the uh, uh, why am I blanking on everybody's name all of a sudden? Um, was Elizabeth the character? Yeah. Um, her tooth gets busted, and they can't go to a dentist, so they have to like pull it out on their own and it's and i think it happens in season three so there's still a lot of like they're not on the same page the husband and wife aren't aren't like entirely on the same page but it's this it's this weird moment of intimacy where he has to help her pull the tooth out and it just that just that it it, it, oh i have chills right now yeah Yeah. stuck with me yeah uh, all-time great show um what's happening with the daughter on that show she should be a star she She was was she's on um she's on um that that uh Oh, oh manifest manifest okay. which get that paycheck my my wife was watching manifest and every once in a while i'd catch an episode and i'm like good for her though mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. 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 wait wait do you hear that wait hold on is, i think is we, the soundboard is this, i think it's the soundboard is there a movie or show that I think deserves more love than it gets? Yes. Yes, there is. And I'm going to say it here. Death to Smoochie is one of my favorite comedies of all time. I've seen it twice in the theater. No Blu-ray release. I'm very fortunate. I saw it both times, opening weekend and then the next weekend and then the following weekend, gone. And it was it had evaporated from the cultural consciousness ever since. It's weird. I keep going to bat for this movie. I think that Disney's John Carter... It was better than everybody acted like it was. I think that it, and I think in the years since I've seen people go, it was okay, but the marketing was really bad. And I go, yeah. So that has become a study in marketing, good or bad, how not to do that kind of thing. And I, and I've seen some retrospectives where people go, here was Disney's last attempt, came out in 2012 to start some big sci fi franchise. And the next time we saw them, it was like, do something like that. It was Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Like th- that, w- that movie was them trying to do Star Wars or have their own new-ish Star Wars. And then they just went, F it. Let's just buy Star Wars. Let's just buy Lucasfilm. I think John Carter was a special movie because for everything in that film that is so generic and so um, old hat by now, it still that movie still feels like it was made by a person who like loves that source material. I am going to say Primal by Gendy Tartakovsky is one of those shows that like if you have not seen this show, if you don't have very much exposure to Gendy or the things that he's doing, even with like the animated Clone Wars he did back in the day, um, I think you should really give Primal a chance. It's it's one of those shows that. Um, there's no, there's hardly any words in it. There's, I don't think there's actually any words in it, but it brought me to tears towards the end because you make such an emotional connection to this character. I think the TV show that I've seen in the last year that absolutely broke me and built me back up again and I just thought was some of the best acting and storytelling that I've seen on TV that not so many people spoke about. It's not nerdy, 
but it's called Normal People based on a book by Sally Rooney, I believe. And I had a friend suggest it to me and then like ask me to do sort of like a video uh, check-in after each episode. And I was like, this is great. This is great. This is great. Hysterical, tears, crying, emotional. And then I was like, why did you do that to me? And then of course, as soon as I finished the last episode, I started it all over again. All right. We're we're, uh, back to our next question from um, Stasek Geta. If you could replace any, oh, this is this is an honor of uh, the unbearable weight of massive talent. If you could replace any main actor in any movie with Nick Cage, uh, who would it be? Uh, and then they and then they say, "Congrats on three hundred and been listening since the beginning. Thank you for joining us this whole time." So, if you could replace any actor in a movie with Nicolas Cage, who would it be? Kevin Spacey in American Beauty, so I could watch it again. How about this? Uh, uh, cosign, but also any Kevin Spacey, any any movie Kevin Spacey's in, we just replace him with Nicholas Seven, uh, Baby I Driver. He could do it. It would be a different energy, but I feel like he could do it. Yeah, I agree. I agree <laughs> entirely. I agree entirely. That's such a good choice. Um, for me, I, oh, this isn't a good answer. Um, sorry, everybody, but uh, is it I, a stupid answer? It's not. Yeah, it is. It is a stupid <laughs> answer because it's not a specific. It's not in the spirit of the question, but. I honestly think Nick Cage could be a very, very good Lex Luthor. I know we originally had him as Superman, and if, if I'm being candid, I would have loved to seen it. I would. I, I'm just very curious, especially Nick Cage then. Very curious, but I think now, I think Nick Cage would absolutely destroy as Lex Luthor. I think he'd be a very good, and I'm and I'm genuinely shocked that especially in like the Schumacher era, whatever, he's never been cast as a Batman villain. Like what? Are, and, and to that note, Professor Pig. If I I want. A real live action Professor Pig. Nicholas that would be Cage. great. That would actually be excellent. Uh oh, uh oh. The, I hear the phone ringing. <laughs> if I could replace any character in any movie with Nick Cage, I would love to see Nick Cage as Captain America because he really is America's hero. And I just think that with his pizzazz, like definitely like national treasure kind of Nick Cage, if you give him the hammer that he has clearly earned over his career, uh, that could be really, really interesting. Does Nick Cage have America's ass? One way to find out. If I could replace anyone with Nicolas Cage. Any mo- If I could replace any movie actor. Well, you know, he almost played Aragorn. So I think, oh, about, boy. I think about that universe sometimes. Would you like to see Nick Cage as so, Lord of the Rings? Look, I'm going to be very frank. And I mean this as somebody who like respects an actor who can yeah. make it through becoming a meme. I don't know if making Nick Cage the lead of anything improves the movie. Um, I don't think he's untalented. I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to say uh, let's replace uh, 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 Robert Denny Jr., Tony Stark himself. <laughs> With Nicolas Cage in Iron Man 1, 2006, 8, whatever year. <laughs> okay, here's why this is so funny. Because my choice was going to be Captain America, the first Avenger. <laughs> so now imagine Doing Captain Nicolas America, Cage. Civil War, with Nicolas Cage as Tony Stark and Nicolas Cage <laughs> as Captain America against each other. Be like, oh, God, I wish I knew some of the lines for that, that you know, like... Um, he killed my mom, Cap. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's I thought we were friends is the Tony line. Yeah. <laughs> it's the end of the line, Bucky. <laughs> I love this question because it gives me the power to be so chaotic. And let me tell you, I love chaos. Inserting Nicolas Cage into any movie, I mean, just mentioning Nicolas Cage is like invoking the spirit of chaos. And I feel like things can't help but like go off the rails a little bit right off the bat. Okay, I feel bad because I'm about to replace a great actor who does a fantastic job in this role. But I'm going to say we're going to take Nick Cage and we're going to put him in the role that Charles Grodin played in The Great Muppet Caper. And let me tell you why. Because Charles Grodin is so good in this movie. He is so great in this movie. He actually makes you believe like, he makes you believe that he's in love with Miss Piggy, or at least like super horned up for Miss Piggy. I mean, like, who wouldn't be? But he's like a massive movie star in a tuxedo. I kind of would love to see the Muppeteers, the artists, 
who are so good at bringing these Muppets to life. I love the Muppets so much. I and mean, I really idolize the work that they do. But the devil on my shoulder says, let's throw Nick Cage in the mix and see these Muppeteers try and keep up. I don't know why I thought of this right away, but what if you took Jeff Goldblum out of Jurassic Park and made that Nick Cage? Yes. In fact, can we just can we just switch all of Nick Cage and Jeff Goldblum's role? Like the fly, but with Nick Cage. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's let's flip them. And honestly, I'd love to see Jeff Goldblum do face off and yes. shit like that. Yes. Could you imagine? Imagine if Jeff Goldblum took all of Nick Cage's roles. Oh my god. That's a great question. If I could replace any actor, any main actor from any movie with Nicolas Cage, I'll replace Jake Johnson in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse to play older Peter Parker because Nick Cage is in that movie. But that would just be fun. I am going to choose violence with this answer. I'm going to choose an, an, a, just enormous amount of violence. John Wick and replace Keanu Reeves with Nicolas Cage. Yes, I choose all of the violence to watch Nicolas Cage go crazy because they killed his dog. And it's, you're right, I'm back. And he's, but the thing is, he's like his character from National Treasure in John Wick. I would replace Jim Carrey as the Riddler with Nicolas Cage and just let him go for it. Because I think Jim Carrey did that. I think Nicolas Cage would do it in a completely different way that is so Nicolas Cage. You know, I think of movies like Face Off and just some of his more eccentric performances. And I'm like, I'm all in on that. Let that guy do it. The fact that he was going to play Superman is insane. But the fact that he would could play the Riddler, I'm like, that is insane, but very much more plausible. All right. Uh, next question uh, is from Brenda. Uh, uh, imagine you're home for the weekend. You've planned a movie slash TV show marathon and your snack budget is unlimited. What are you binging and what are you eating? All right. Recently, I was just shooting something for World Girls and Steph stopped at a gas station to get a snacks for the shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she got a lot of sap. I didn't realize it. Like there are sour gummy bears, sour strings. DJ, those those hit hard. They do. I they was like, they don't mess wow. around. Wow. Um, but I always get when we go to there's this one movie theater that most of the screenings are at now. It never used yep. to be where the screenings were. And, and now, now every screening is there, yep. um, which is incredibly convenient for me and incredibly inconvenient for DJ. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I do they, like that it's that it's um, the one place. So it's, I'm always going to the same yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you can kind of time it out yeah. then. But they have um, uh, these cinnamon pretzel cinnamon sugar pretzel vanilla frosting things that now are my favorite movie snack oh yeah um Hell also yeah. you asked what movie but i didn't care as much about that part as i did about <laughs> the, the snacks <laughs> you were all about the snacks well can can you guess i'm curious can you guess because i live in the future so i've already done the guest interviews can you guess what the most common answer was from the guests for what they would binge binge eat binge watch what they would watch any movie yeah any movie they're they're watching over the 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 weekend there three at least three people had the same response is it into the spider verse it's not actually how about how about we let them speak for themselves okay okay so if i had an unlimited snack budget and had the time set for a marathon of some sort some kind of cool marathon party or whatever what would it be and what would my snacks be so i did i just did an earnest marathon earnest movie marathon with some friends so we did all we did the four meaningful earnest movies so earnest goes to camp earnest saves christmas earnest goes to jail earnest scared stupid and the way we did it was we didn't stop the movies. We put them in a playlist and we just let it go. That way there was no time between movies to talk or forget to hit play or whatever. So the movies just went and we had our snacks. We had like chips and dips. We had Funyuns and Doritos, all the classic fat kid snacks and, you know, Coca-Colas and, and stuff. And we were eating like, you know, like gluttons, but the Ernest movies was a real good one. But one that I want to do next is the Herbie movies. I want a Herbie movie marathon and I want Herbie themed food. Fuck it. If I have unlimited time and unlimited budget, I'm going to rewatch Degrassi The Next Generation. 
There are so many episodes and they are all so good. And if I was going to pick a snack to do it with, I'd have to go with combos because there are a wide variety of flavors in combos. You have uh, the cheese, you have the pizza, you have the, the buffalo with the little blue cheese flavor. I don't know how they make it taste just like blue cheese, but they do. If we can binge something and we have an unlimited Food snack budget. budget, what are we doing? Uh, macaroni, something with macaroni and cheese, because this is a macaroni household. And M&M's. <laughs> and M&M's and the crunchy Cheetos. Yep. Only the crunch. One year for my birthday, Jason just gave me two big bowls and one was crunchy Cheetos and one was M&M's. Um, uh, Mike and Ike's. You know what? I'm going to throw out there. I'm going to throw out there. Okay. We we're going to throw some Mike and Ike's out there. Yeah, we're gonna throw- yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say we are watching the Lord of the Rings extended That's edition. That's correct. And every time <laughs> that Pippin needs to eat, so do we. Oh, yeah. So not only is it second breakfast, yes. it's third breakfast, fourth breakfast. We'll probably get up to 25th breakfast. My binge is always Lord of the Rings. The extended cut and all the bonus footage from everything else. The 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 10 hour documentary of all that stuff. Uh, and it would all be Hobbit based snacks. It would all be like roasted and salted meats that I would somehow make. If I'm binging a series, it's probably going to be Lord of the Rings. Anytime I ever just want to watch a series of something outside of the original Star Wars trilogy, which I already did with my wife the other day, no brag there, but uh, it would be Lord of the Rings extended, of course, because if you're just going to throw on a movie, you might as well make it a three and a half hour long movie. Uh, but and, and then it would just be a smorgasbord because that movie makes me hungry every time. It's like the uh, the dinner scene in Hook. You know, every time I'm like, that food is unfathomable. I want to eat all of it. And so if I had an unlimited food budget, there would just be this unbelievable. It would be like Thanksgiving times 11 plus all three Lord of the Rings movies. And I'd have to invite all my Hobbit friends and it would just be this this orgy of food and good fantasy cinema. Uh, follow-up question, is the Hobbit involved in any of that? Oh no. If you're gonna if you're gonna do the Hobbit, you have to get on YouTube and watch the four hour supercut where they condense the story. Or I will make a double pitch. We, we will only watch the, the first, first one, one and not two and three, because the first one. I enjoy. It's pretty close to the books. And, Great casting yeah, choices. And, and they the just get, they get on, you get the golem parts, they get on top of the hill and they're like, well, we got to go to that mountain. And you're just like, you know what? I can fill in the blanks. I don't mean to speak ill of movies. So I'm going to include The Hobbit. I'm, I'm going to include The Hobbit because it's all part of the shared universe, even though I have my issues with The Hobbit. Uh, I, I know that the, some of the decisions made on that movie were not exactly Peter Jackson's call. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because I love that man. He is a true hobbit and he deserved much better for those movies, but I'm going to support his movies. If it's me by myself, I'm going to try to finish watching the 1997 animated show Extreme Ghostbusters because I'm in the middle of my Ghostbusters stuff. Yes. Right now. I right now. loved that. Sh- I watched that show, I guess, probably when it aired. And, yeah. and I, I thought at yeah. the time, I've not revisited, but at the time I thought it was yeah. really good. It holds up. It holds up okay. It holds up all right, but I'll say that like Extreme Ghostbusters, I can confidently say is the most underrated thing in the Ghostbusters franchise. And my snacks would be, I'm going to go chocolate covered pretzels. I'll just say bags and bags of chocolate covered pretzels. Yeah, that's an unhealthy weekend. If I got an unlimited budget, oh, God's going to hate me for this one. I'm buying a lot of, um, first off, I'm buying a lot of kombucha. I sound real bougie saying this, but here's why. Kombucha is going to break down whatever I eat so I can eat more, okay? I have to think of this logically and reasonably. And if I got an unlimited budget, I'm going to Gino's Pizza out here in Los Angeles because it's the only thing close to home from Chicago. What am I watching, though, all the way through? There's not just one thing. I'm probably going to go on a marathon between The Wire and Insecure. I'm taking all, if I got a whole week to do, I'm going to get all of my feelings watching McNulty and Oba and all of them and string a bell. And then I'm going to just laugh and be like, yo, this is how you solve the world's problems with humor and insecure. Yeah. You watch a season of The Wire and then you're like, okay, you detox with the season of Insecure. Yeah, you you just all said it right. You go back and forth. You all said everything. If I were to um, have an unlimited snack budget and spend the entire weekend watching a movie or binging a TV series, <clears throat> AKA, every weekend for me. Um, so I'll just tell you what I do. I would probably, oh, this is the saddest thing. Rewatch Bridgerton, 
with a pint of ice cream because that kind of love doesn't exist in real life. I think even though I've seen these movies hundreds of times, I am going to go with the entire Halloween anthology. That includes every single film. That's not just cherry picking whatever timeline I want. That's the whole thing, baby. I'm going Halloween one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm doing H2O Resurrection. I'm even jumping over to the Rob Zombie remakes and I'm doing the brand new sequels. Snack wise, I might, this might sound a little bougie, but I have a wine that I absolutely love called Rumbauer. It is an amazing wine and I'm pairing that with a charcuterie board and that charcuterie board is going to have candied pecans. It's going to have four different types of cheeses, Manchego cheese, brie cheese, all kinds of cheeses. I love getting into the deli section, into the meats. You got to have the meats and then you just beautifully kind of uh, surround that with some nice fruit. And if I'm feeling adventurous, for sure, when I'm done with that charcuterie board, I'm diving into my favorite, favorite candies. We got me some goobers, some Skittles, some Reese's Pieces. I'm going to throw all those into a little bag of popcorn. Oh, my God. That's actually dangerous. I might die if I do that. So for me, to answer the question, for me, I think... I think because, because okay, I'm watching some of them over the weekend. I want something to feel good. I want something I really enjoy. I'm actually thinking... Uh, the Avatar, the last Airbender animated series and Legend of Korra, because I think mm. for for the most part, especially Avatar is basically a perfect show. Um, uh, maybe like one or two episodes, meh, but like the, for the most part, I think that that show really hits. Um, and as far as snacks, I think back to uh, and I don't know, this is what I would do, but I think back to I remember uh, uh, me and my good friend when we were roommates out here uh, in Burbank, sunny Burbank, California, there was a pizza place we loved to go to. And, uh, and and we had a tradition, like on the weekend, we'd go to this pizza place and then it burned down. And what we were pretty uh, sure was an insurance fire. <laughs> we were pretty sure, we're, we're like 90% sure it was an insurance fire. Uh, and so we were desperate one day, like we went there and it was gone. And so our, our what we made up for, what, for was we went to, uh, what we made up, with was we went to little caesars and we got one of those five dollar little caesars and then we went to Krispy Kreme and we got a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts uh oh. we were younger men we could handle we could handle that stuff better than I probably could now uh and so that's what I think of I'm like okay Avatar the Last Airbender fucking shitty sorry little caesars shitty ass little caesars pizza <laughs> I love it but it's not the best um and and Krispy Kreme donuts and then uh, I think it was I think it was uh, I can't remember who it was, but one of the people we talked to was like, "And I'm going to get a bunch of kombucha." I'm like, "Yep, good call, good call on that uh, to help loosen up the tummy." Okay, uh, this is the last question. This is we were doing so good. Um, this is our last question, and I'm just going to read it. Jake Hefner, uh, I don't know how to ask this without sounding trollish, so please forgive the tone. But what are some of your all's hot takes? I recently rewatched the Venom 2 review episode with Sal and DJ saying Spider Man 3 is better than all the MCU Spidey films. While I disagree with it, I respect it, but it did make me laugh, though. Uh, listen, I'm going to double down. I think Spider Man 3, well, clearly the worst of that trilogy, is better than most superhero movies in the last decade. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> cray, cray. cray. Yeah. I hear you, though. I love those movies. I think that my hottest takes tend to be that Hayden Christensen's amazing mm -hmm. um, and the best part of the prequels. Um, also, hot takes uh, that I love Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. That's a, just in general, people get a kick out of that one. And um, my, the, my hot take that... Most people have never even seen this movie, so I don't know how this can be that hot of a take, but it has a 13% on Rotten Tomatoes. But my my favorite movie, I think it was of 2019, could have been 2018, was Life Itself. I, rem I, knew, I remember. We talked about this. I remember. It was so good. Well, I don't know can, what people. Can I co-sign something with you? Having just rewatched all the Spider-Man movies. Yeah. Uh, I will say Amazing Spider-Man 2 is better than Amazing Spider-Man 1. Um, and I think Amazing Spider-Man 2 is is also better than almost every MCU Spider-Man movie. Oh my God. You are, you really hate those MCU Spider-Man I don't, I don't hate them. It just, they very much feel compared, like at least for all their flaws, Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3 are actual, more Amazing Spider, more Spider-Man 3 than Amazing Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 starts to get some of the problems of modern superhero movies where it's trying to like set up a million franchises. They're made by filmmakers trying to make actual movies. 
mm-hmm. as opposed to like, what's going on in the MCU? Starring Spider-Man. Uh, you know what I mean? It's like, it's about Peter. It's about his journey. Um, uh, of course, with the caveat of No Way Home, because that is more Peter focused. Anyway, if I haven't given enough hot takes, here's another one for you. I think the Game of Thrones finale is not as bad as everybody likes to say it is. <laughs> I think it is a perfectly good finale. It might not have been what people wanted. I think the the problems of the final seasons are actually problems that started in season five. If you have if you have problems with the finale, those the the problems that the show did not start winding it down seasons earlier. Uh, and I think Game of Thrones has weaker seasons. I think five or six whenever we go to the sand snakes that where like jamie goes on that side wrench i think that season's uh not that good <laughs> hold on there's a the that's hot so if i were to have any sort of cancelable take or any hot take spicy take batman and robin is actually a pretty great film it's a guilty pleasure of mine i Love that movie. What does it not do? Take itself seriously. What does it do? Give me a bunch of one-liners from Schwarzenegger. You know, we talk about Lost a lot. And I really love Lost, unapologetically. Like, I know that there's bad stuff in Lost, but I think it's like a perfect package. And I think the ending to Lost is perfect for Lost. So I don't know, but I don't think that's so hot of a take. Because I think there's it's just divisive. Like, some people love it, some people don't. So I need to think of something a little bit more of a hot take. Oh, I need something spicy, even in the movie world, huh? Oh, I love cats. I love the movie cats. And I I have, it's not ironic, it's unironic. I'm gonna say it, cause I can go back to this, it's, it's back to this franchise. The first Fantastic Four movie is not bad. It is not a bad movie. People keep being like, oh, it was this, what did you expect? It was literally set as a 2000s comic book movie. It is not made as a movie that's meant to open up this major world. Now, I'm not talking about Rise of the Silver Surfer. Fantastic Four was okay. Look, Jessica Alba has to learn how to act. We all do this, okay? Chris Evans was having fun. However you pronounce dude's name who played Reed Richards, he was there. And Michael Chiklis looks like the thing. One of my spiciest hot takes, I have so many and it really annoys people, so I'll go with a really much mild one that just came to me off the top of my head and it is every time i see mark ruffalo as bruce banner the hulk just a twinge of myself goes i kind of wish that was edward norton i don't think the fifth element is a great movie (laughs) i really don't understand the fandom behind it uh bruce willis amazing outstanding the fifth element i don't get like i feel like People who are our age watched it at a very specific time in their life and they're just buzzing off that nostalgia. You know what? My take on movies that people give a lot of heat to for liking, which I think the movie is fan-freaking-tastic, Hook. I don't know why people say that's a bad movie. Maybe, you know, I was of age where I watched that in the cinemas when it came out, but that movie shaped my life. It had impeccable acting. Dustin Hoffman, one of the better villains out there. Robin Williams just force feeding us life through our soul. That fantastic movie. I mean, I named my Tamagotchi Rufio after that film, but then I found out that people were like, not, not, not a great movie. What's wrong with you? Oh yeah. I have, here's the one I get death threats over all the time. So bring them on. You can't say anything worse to me than that guy on Instagram did. Ant-Man movies are bad. That's Ashley's hot take. They're all bad. Paul Rudd is a good Ant-Man who should be a supporting character. The Dark Knight Rises is nowhere near as bad as everybody has been saying it is. And it does not ruin the trilogy. The biggest problem with it is that it is two movies shoved together. It is Batman No Man's Land and it is Batman Nightfall. And they should have just picked one. If they had done just Batman Nightfall and it's just Batman versus Bane would have been an awesome movie. If they've just done No Man's Land would have been an awesome movie. I don't have a problem with Bane even. I would even keep Bane. I think the bigger problem is all the Talia al Ghul stuff. The most influential comic book creator of all time is not Jack Kirby. I love Jack Kirby. I have tons of Jack Kirby books. Idolize Jack Kirby. Love his creations. Is he influential? Absolutely. No question. Maybe the most influential American creator. He's up there for sure. Arguably the most influential American creator. 
cut the most page for page, the most influential comic creator of all time is Osamu Tezuka. Osamu Tezuka is a Japanese manga creator. He's no longer with us. He's considered the Walt Disney of Japan. He is a Walt Disney level figure in Japan for the sheer amount of work that he created uh, as a manga creator, as an animator, um, as a designer. He truly spanned all these different disciplines. Anywhere there's comics, manga is there and manga is an influence. So while I love Jack Kirby, I think page for page, pound for pound, the most influential creator of all time, it's it's Tezuka. Oh my goodness. We answered all your questions. Uh, I want to I wanna thank all of our guests for coming on and joining us and taking time out of their busy, busy schedules for doing this. I want to thank, thank you. Uh, I want to thank uh, 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 Sam could not uh, Sam Basher could not join us today. He sends his love, but I want to uh, send my thanks to him for for starting the show with me, and I want to uh, and for and for being the the beating heart, uh, and I want to thank Roxy for for continuing the show with me um, during the Panini and and doing these live shows with me. I'm very I'm very uh, grateful. Um, I'm very grateful to. Uh, everybody, all our guests and everyone for being a part of this. I'm going to not, I'm not going to get emotional. I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I want to thank our audience. I want to thank our patrons because uh, honest to God, uh, I know people, every, every show says it, that it couldn't happen to other patrons, but that is 100% t- true in our case. Um, uh, shit, man, I wouldn't be happening without our patrons um, in general and for all our listeners. So uh, much love. Thank you for joining us for 300 episodes. Um, and uh, before we go, uh, I want to play this little clip from our very first episode. This, this was, I just listened to this this morning. This is how Sam and I introduced our very first episode. Oh, hey guys. Welcome back to our little podcast. Wait, welcome back. This is the first episode. <laughs> this is the first Nailing time. It. Oh, right man. off the bat. Right off the bat. I mean, we have to start on a like a sloppy foot and then you, like by the end, you got you crossed the finish line and it's like well you made it yeah you right? made it you made it in the end you made That's it what matters. as long as you make it in the end guys we made it welcome to <laughs> our podcast it. first episode we're tre- we're testing it chesting it out welcome back we made it we made it this is our first one <laughs> welcome back to it this is uh uh always stupid answers we're trying out some names we're a fan of it because uh, oh, uh, no stupid questions was taken yes so we're going the opposite the old turner phrase goes there are no dumb questions mm mm-hmm. Only stupid answers. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're. That's only stupid. Uh, only answers, stupid, stupid answers. answers. There we go. <laughs> oh, was it always? Is that what I said? <laughs> I had one, DJ. I have a thank you to say. So I don't know if you know this, DJ. Um, and I don't know that you guys at home know this. Maybe if you listen to my show, but I, my friends make fun of me that come to the screenings with me because every time we see you, DJ, I say, "Love that guy." I think that you are just the greatest. First of all, for those of you at home who don't know, DJ is my boss and has been for years, but he treats me like I'm a collaborative partner. Um, and I love working for DJ. Like you are on top of it. You are understanding. You are, you make a great show and you care what I think about the show and what I think that I should add to it. And I've had so many horrible bosses. <laughs> And we don't even describe it like that because they like the people just think of you and me just doing the show together. But like that, you know, this was DJ and Sam's love child. And then DJ wanted me to continue making it with him. And I'm just so grateful for that. So you are just like the greatest boss. And um, for anybody who ever cares about how the products are made, how the sausage is made, this is a good one to support because DJ is freaking awesome. Uh, That means a lot that means that means more than you could probably know uh again i'm gonna try and not get emotional so thank you for that uh yeah, the show I mean it. would not be continuing without you and i'm very I'm, I'm incredibly thankful that you were able to be a part of it thank um, you dj I, and this, thank you to the people at home you guys are awesome too 
DJ is just slightly more awesome in this moment. Uh, uh, Roxy, hold on. I, I forgot one of the most important things. You've got a new podcast. Speaking of podcast, you've got one and you've already got three episodes in the can. Yeah, we do. It's called Bitch Out of Water by the World Girls. For anybody who's ever felt like a fish out of water, that can be a real bitch. So listen to Bitch Out of Water. We talk about all of the experiences that we've had, uh, tips and tricks to get through them, things that we've given a world in life that we feel like we are either in the middle of and have a good perspective of or on the other side of and might be able to help you guys with them. So we dropped our first three episodes. The first one was on polyamory. Dee came out to the world as the beautiful polyamorous person she is. She talked about her uh, husband who she loves and her boyfriend she loves and how she ended up there. We talked about cannabis and where cannabis is in the state of the world right now, where it is legal, where it is not, how we came to cannabis and different tips for people who are new to cannabis or people who have been using for a long time. And also moving to Los Angeles for anybody who's thinking about doing it. How much money was in our bank accounts when we got here? Where did we first live? How do we navigate dealing with new kinds of people? Uh, and how did we get our first job? So if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure you check out Bitch Out of Water by the World Girls. Please go support that. There will be link. There will be links in the description. Go check it out. Uh, uh, you can find me at DJ Talks Trash, every place that matters. Uh, you can find the show at Only Stupid Answers, but on Twitter. Yank out the vowels from stupid for the 300th time. <laughs> for the 300th time. Uh, and uh, uh, once again, thank you all for joining us. And we'll see you all for 301. Bye, everybody. Happy, Happy 300th, 300th episode. episode. Happy 300th episode, Only Stupid Answers. I remember when I was nine years old and I listened to the first episode. I've been a fan ever since. Ever since DJ said that one thing about that one movie. Wow. Only Stupid Answers podcast. Happy 300 episodes. It's been awesome. To only stupid answers, man. Happy 300 episodes. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of many of these episodes, talking about so many different things, whether it be comic books, other pop culture things, and just having fun with you guys. You all are amazing. I'm glad to be a part of it. DJ, happy 300 episodes. This is an incredible show. It started from humble beginnings, and it's blossomed into this beautiful, incredible commentary series that I love and adore. It's one of my personal favorites. Congratulations on 300. Here's to 300 more, man. Hey, I just I just want to congratulate DJ on his 300th episode of Only Stupid Answers podcast. Only Stupid Answers. You just hit 300 episodes, you cheeky thing. Well done, you. I just want to say I am psyched and thrilled and honored to be here to which a happy 300 episodes to Only Stupid Answers. Congratulations, Only Stupid Answers, on your 300th episode. I feel so privileged to be a part of this. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited that we get to talk about and share our love for superheroes and and fandom and nerddom and uh, thank you guys for being such a positive uh such a positive place where people can come talk about stuff and have a drink to your 300th cheers 